News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A robbery outside a casino early this morning. Three are still at large. Good morning, everyone. This is Montana Morning. It is Tuesday, August the 12th, 2014. Right now we have a, just a few high clouds and 62 degrees. And a red flag warning has been issued for all of western Montana because of incoming thunderstorms. I'll tell you more about that a little bit later on in the newscast. Our news this morning sponsored by Dr. Troy Doxy and the friendly team at Chiropractic Works. Call 728-0222. At least Three suspects are at large this morning after an armed robbery outside a local casino. Sergeant J.C. Denton with Missoula Police Department provides these details. A male was confronted by possibly three males in the parking lot of a casino on West Broadway. Uh, the Laughing Grizzly and a weapon was allegedly pointed at him and money was taken. And the males fled the scene. We were able to locate them. We had set up a perimeter uh, around the area and um, did a Detailed search of the area for the suspects was not able to locate them. The men fled on foot. There was no clear description provided by the victim. who was robbed of an undisclosed amount of cash. No one was injured. If anybody with information asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 721-4444. Beaverhead County authorities are searching for two persons of interest in a weekend homicide at a campground in southwestern Montana. Sheriff Jay Hansen says the body of a man in his early 60s was found in some willow trees near the Bryant Creek campground at midday Saturday. Officers determined a fight had taken place near the campground. The county called in the State Division of Criminal Investigation due to the large crime area and unpredictable weather. The man's body was taken to the state crime lab here in Missoula and an autopsy was completed yesterday. Investigators have identified two persons of interest but have not yet released their names. Officers are looking for a 1983 cream-colored establishment motorhome with either a Montana or a Washington State license plate and a white 1997 Ford Explorer with Washington State license plates. One man who continues to seek the Democratic Party's nomination for the U.S. Senate, John Bollinger, criticized President Obama's leadership during his appearance on Talkback yesterday. I think he's he's been a poor, uh, he'll go down as one of our our poorest leaders. I do think that one of the things that that, uh, was accomplished under his administration that I do like, uh, I am um, in favor of the expansion of Medicaid. Bollinger describes the process by which a new candidate will be chosen at the nominating convention, which is scheduled for this Saturday in Helena. The people who have expressed interest in seeking the nomination must have someone nominate them. They can give a five-minute nominating speech. The nomination has to be seconded. The slate of candidates is then chosen. Others vying for the nomination include Dirk Adams and Frankie Wilmer. A southeastern Montana man shot a black bear a day after the Bruin called into his house through an open window. Jim and Jeanette Lay told the Miles City Star the bear had been hanging around their place near Ashland for a month. Jeanette says at one point the bear ate the cat food right off the porch. On July 28th, the male bear climbed in through a window. Jim yelled, and the bear tried several windows before crawling out the one it came in. When the bear came back the next day and was looking through the same window, the couple decided it had no fear of people. Jim, who was 82, shot the bear and then called a game warden who was 100 miles away. The recently completed Western Montana Fair may have celebrated its 100th anniversary, but it was the very first year for fair director Todd Garrett. One of the challenges Garrett had to face was a potentially dangerous situation involving food provided by North Star Amusements at their commercial food booths. After three of the vendors had to be shut down on Friday by the health department. Garrett says the fair has a contract with North Star. We have a three-year contract. We're in the second year, and so we have another year in that contract. I would like to explore options that would mandate only our local food concessions are allowed during the fair. Garrett says the carnival has more ways to make money than just serving food. Carnivals have other components to the carnival. In addition to the ride, they have the games, they have some novelty sales, and they also have food concessions. Whether or not we would be able to get a carnival to provide us a bid without those food concessions, I'm not sure. Garrett says this year's fair has been complimented as being the cleanest on record, and despite all the other entertainment events in town during fair week, such as the Paul McCartney and ZZ Top Jeff Beck concerts, that attendance was actually up slightly from last year.
Firefighters are responding to a lightning-caused fire Saturday not far from the Bitterroot Flat Campground in the Missoula Ranger District. Lolo National Forest spokesman Boyd Hartwick has more on what's being called the West Alder Fire. It's about 20 miles south of Interstate 90 in the Rock Creek drainage. So it's on the, the west side of Rock Creek itself and, and Rock Creek Road. It's a lightning-caused fire burning kind of on mid to upper slopes kind of rocky, steep terrain up there. It's about 15 acres right now. Hardwick details the efforts being made to control that small blaze. We've got two helicopters assigned. We've got two 20-person crews. Um, and, you know, we could have additional folks coming in as well. Um, it's right now, it's, it's being managed as, uh, with helicopters and, and water drops. Smoke is likely to be visible from to some Rock Creek residents and to vehicle traffic on Rock Creek Road. Firefighters across the northwest reacted as triple-digit heat and lightning made their job even more difficult in an area where two dozen large wildfires are already burning. The Central Oregon Interagency Dispatch Center said roughly 1,500 lightning strikes started nearly 20 new wildfires by Monday evening in Central Oregon alone. Thunderstorms across Oregon, Washington, and Idaho are expected to through, uh, through tonight on Monday, temperatures at 107 degrees in the Columbia River Gorge at the Dalles in Oregon. Of course, let's talk about that weather, shall we? The National Weather Service is predicting a line of thunderstorms starting today and increasing in intensity tomorrow, followed by periods of heavy rain and cooler temperatures. Here's meteorologist Dan Zump. The really big storms aren't going to be until Wednesday, Thursday, when we could see some hail, maybe some severe wind gusts. And so that's something we'll have to brace for. And then that will be followed by a good bout of rain. So we could be looking at storms turning into solid rain by the time we get to Friday. Zump says the temperatures in western Montana will be dramatic dramatically cooler as these storms pass through. Looks like the rain's going to bring cooler temperatures and uh, you might need a jacket by the weekend. Uh, temperatures getting down to the low 70s for highs, so that's pretty that's pretty cool for in August. Monday's high was 98 degrees, just two degrees shy of the record of 100, which was set back in 1996. Our news talk time is 610. News talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Partly cloudy skies throughout the first half of the day. Towards the afternoon, we'll watch for showers and thunderstorms as they develop. Some thunderstorms could produce gusty winds and frequent lightning. Highs today will be in the mid-90s. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.